Hello, and welcome to episode 63 of Nintendo Therapy, a show about the latest Nintendo news and rumors, as well as a celebration of all of the things Nintendo, now available on YouTube. My name is Kevin, and with me at the dirt track to talk about Excite Bike, indie game hype, and mistakes we like is Harrison. Hey guys, welcome back. And Sean. You're getting slick at these intros trying I'm, I'm basically copying every podcast i listen to <laughs> take what i like leaves what i don't um so uh how's everybody's week we had some uh a little bit of a a direct i guess you could call it the indie direct um yeah so i'm well. i'm glad we're talking about it because i didn't really look at anything past the turtles so <laughs> Yeah, and I'm definitely getting the Turtles game. Obviously, that's a guaranteed sale for me. I don't know if it'll be a day one sale because as I keep bringing up on this podcast, I have so many games to play right now, but definitely before the Switch 2 drops, I'll be getting it. Well, uh, uh, I guess it's silly, but the uh, other Turtles, the Wrath of the Mutants will be out when this uploads and... I'm definitely waiting for it to get even cheaper, <clears throat> and I'm sure it's stupid on my part, but I didn't realize the game basically takes an hour, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, 25 bucks, nope. <laughs> wait Honestly, I'm happy about that, though, With again, with the backlog. Like, I'm like, no, I can no, use some games. That's why I'm playing Luigi's Mansion right now. I'm like, oh, great, a five-hour game? Sign me up. Yeah, yeah, So, but price-wise, I'm like, nope, nope. Got to wait on that because, good Lord, that that's way too short, and I don't know how many times I actually would replay it. Yeah, I haven't gone back to Shredder's Revenge in a while, I'll admit. So I think once I unlocked all the characters, I was like, I was sold. Yeah, once I uh, finished the survival mode, I, I haven't. Or maybe really, that was it. It's been that long. Really I don't even remember it. what stopped me. But uh, yeah, Cowabunga, I'm up to two of them at least so far, completed without save states. So I'm still trying to make that happen. What jumped out to you this week, Harrison? Uh, so Splintered Fate uh, comes out July t- twenty twenty four. Um, yep. That I, I want to tr- I want to try it on on mobile. Basically, most games that are like in the Apple Arcade, like games that get like put on there first, I I never hear about or pay attention to. So I didn't I didn't know about this one. Um, the yep. the roguelike seems awesome. I think um, if if it runs this well on like iPads, I think this port's going to be great. And all, all like all the upgrades and all like all the collectibles I saw in it just got me really excited. And and I'm not I'm not just like talking it up because it's like you guys, but um, I really like roguelikes. This has oh, yeah, like everything. This has everything in it that um, just makes me excited about it, and it and the multiplayer looks cool too. Like it, it, it looks like a it looks like a roguelike, which would be enjoyable um, single player and multiplayer, which can be very challenging. I think. Um, oh yeah. But yeah. Um. There, there was there were so many games that stuck out. To me, in this indie indie direct, it felt like it was it was made for me. Um, <laughs> I I put it on our document incorrectly. Um, Sticky business, which is like a a storefront game where you just like make make and sell stickers. Um, yeah. It's like a perfect cozy game to put on Switch. It'll run perfectly. Um, it's a great price point. Um, it's not for most people, probably not for like anyone on this podcast, but <laughs> it's, but, but it's super fun. Like, like when I played it on steam, I'm like, this game needs to be on a switch because it's just like, it's just cute. And you like, you make sticker, make cute stickers. And then you, you sell the stickers and you get new stickers, you know, that's a cool um, idea. I was a little right. disappointed in the indie direct because I keep waiting for more news on the Plucky Squire, and I was hoping that was going to show up here. But uh, I'm starting right. to think that game's not coming out this year, guys. <laughs> I, I feel like we should at least have a release date by now. Well, I mean, 
do, do I, we I, even need to bring up uh, Silk Song there? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, 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 I was going to, but I'm glad you did it first. Um, <laughs> it's un, it's unfair to compare every indie game not out to to, uh, to Hollow Knight because I, I feel like that one <laughs> should have a release date over Bloody that Square. one. There, there's no way that game would ever be announced in an in indie world. That game will be announced at like a at the, the game, game of the events. game of the year game of the year awards or something like that. Like that announcement is going to be huge. If there was E3, it would be it would be E3. Yeah, but uh, Plucky Squire, I don't feel like a lot of people know about. I think this would have been a good place to showcase, like remind people it exists even and. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's because it's multi-platform that they skipped it or what, but because uh, it is, it does say it's coming to everything. It's coming to PlayStation Five, Steam, Xbox, Switch, whatever you got, it can play it. I was kind of excited they they made a third Cat Quest, and that you're pirates now. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. I really like those games. Those are fun. I've never heard of them. What what's that about? Oh, now that I'm, I googled the image, I have seen this like. Um, is this on PS5? I think I've seen this on um, the, my PlayStation Plus membership. It, it is. It is. It, okay. it, I, okay. I think it's on everything. I, I think it's on okay. everything. It might even be on mobile as, as well. Uh, kind of like old school Zelda-ish, I guess. It, it, yes, it, but there, there's a. It, it's a lot of. It's a lot of. It's a lot of dodging, and it's a lot yeah, of like, yeah. and, and, and and like. You, you're saying it's kind of like old school Zelda because of like the dungeons, right? The dungeons and kind of the perspective. But I was just happy they made. Yeah. Um, my wife likes those games, so I'm like, ooh, it's a third one. And your pirates, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> so. Cat, 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 Cat Quest one and two were phenomenal. Like, like they were just absolutely phenomenal games. Um, they they're they're always on sale for like a few dollars if you ever want to pick it pick it up. I think. I like- the second one's co-op too, so that's the second one's nice. co-op. The second one's co-op. The first one's not co-op, just just as a warning. Um, and, and they're like, they're like five-hour games, like five yeah. ten-hour games. I think that you can that you can play over and over again. Um, oh yeah. It was when Switch first came out. Cat Quest was like in my in like my top indie games. Um, so. Like, oh right, it's first... going in the dock. It's going in the in the backlog checklist yeah. dock. I'll I'll try it. <laughs> it, it. If if the first two are if the first two are that good, there's no reason to not buy this third one. And yeah, um, the first then... one isn't like hard to find or like uh, no, like, none of them are hard not, to find. It's, well, no, by that no, I the... mean like I know sometimes these things like the first one will be on like PS3 or something. They're, and, oh, like, they're no, both no, no. okay. The, they're, they're both on. Switch. They're both on sale right now. Okay, like, like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure Cat Quest One's like three dollars right now, um, because <laughs> sweet. B- b- because I like, can hide that purchase from the wife. Because, because <laughs> every like every indie, in, 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 including Bellatro, is um is on sale right now. So, um, and, and if we're gonna talk about sequels, I'm just gonna lead us right into Steam World Heist Two, which was the final announcement of uh, of, of this presentation. Um, I never get around to Heist. How was it? Steam. It's 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 one of those like, what do you call it? It's a, it's a strategic shooter. Yeah. Where you have to like bounce bounce it off the walls and everything. Um. Not my genre of game, but but I played through it and I, and I loved it. I loved the characters. Um, it just it, each one of their games runs phenomenal on Switch. Um, I haven't played the the newest one, Steam World Build, but I've played the rest of them. They're they're all rated very very well. They're all reviewed very very well, and they they just haven't missed yet. So I would recommend any steam world game um i'm not and I'm, I'm not i'm not surprised they're making another one uh based on the success oh i should mention so steam world heist is august 8th 2024 oh cat quest 3 is the same day i didn't realize that that's a coincidence 
It's also August 8th. Um, head to head. R- right. Um, oh, whisker to I, whisker. I, I, I did want to mention on here that that there is a um, a game that released already called Stitch, um, and and their uh, studio is based in Thailand, which is pretty cool. Like I, I just I enjoy. It's the first time I think I've watched a Nintendo presentation that featured a a Thailand uh, studio. Oh, that's so cool. so good for them. Um, I sent them sent them a quick email already congratulating them. I think that's pretty cool. So the other one I was curious on was Anton Blast. It's like a, I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like Anton Blast. Really even, I don't know how to like even describe it. It just looks entertaining to me. So this like is one of the ones. Rolling. It's it's weird. <laughs> like it's it's definitely weird. Is there anything you could compare it to? I keep it's, seeing people comparing it to the pizza. That was that oh, um, uh, p- p- uh, pizza. Um, oh, that huge pizza game tower. last year, Pizza Tower. Yeah, it does look like Pizza Tower. Comparing it to that, uh, um, it, it 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 does have like the the, the fast paced side scrolling. Like it it definitely looks like a '90s cartoon. Yeah. Um, was this was this towards the end? Because they they threw a lot of games at us at the end. Like, it was. Um, I think it was towards the end of the whole thing. This this one looks this one this one looks really cool. Um, yeah, just very fast paced. Clear clearly, like there's just no no limits on what you can do as far as graphic styles these days or art styles because. Yeah, it, it looks like a game that, that that would come out for like the SNES or something. And then the other one that I'm glad that they rebrought my attention to was another Crab's Treasure, which I guess is launching end of this month. And I I was very interested in it. I, I like the idea of it, like trying to track down your shell you lost. So <laughs> that was that was my biggest conclusion of, of the presentation was that like we just we're going back to the sea. It's like it's like it's like I I guess we should just go back to like Zelda Wind Waker because like no er, er, everything's surrounded by the ocean. Everything everything's boats. Everything's ocean. Like like I think I think That's all of fair. it. Even even what even was the new Steam World game had boats in it. Like I I feel like every <laughs> other game I saw had had some some kind of sea of stars something in it that that's the thing this year i guess with indies <laughs> so. another crab's treasure also looks really interesting i think yeah. this game will i I, th- I think this game is going to be perfect on switch because it's just i i think it's built for it i mean it's it, it feels like a nintendo game in spirit to me just because yeah. the entire plot is finding your shell so yeah like I don't want to be the name a, of that one again. Another crab's treasure, which um, I'm trying to, trying to pull it up here. It comes out April 25th. Uh, so yeah. it comes out. Yeah, it comes out. It comes out soon. It comes out on all. Comes out on all platforms. Um, not no. It com- comes out on all home consoles. Um, it it just looks. It just looks like. Not, not 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 an offensive way, but it just, it looks so stupid. It just looks like such a, like such a stupid idea. Like if you There's see a part the part where he's using a handgun as a shell. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it just <laughs> like he's wearing a tin can on his back. Like he just looks very very sad. Um, I find is, find if stupid is in your pitch, that's usually a good thing. Yeah, so. because because like I mean. I mean a synonym for that would just be silly, and Nintendo games should be silly. Just be, Absolutely. Just be silly. Like, like even you need more games where you fight with a fork as your weapon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kevin, name all of them right now. <laughs> uh, well, you can do it in uh, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Um... <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that you could do it in Time Splitters because you could play, you could fight with anything in that game. I know you can 
pick up forks in uh, Skyrim. Is there anything, any way you can attack? I don't know them? if you can fight. Yeah, with, well, I'm not sure if you can <laughs> fight with them. Maybe there's yeah. a mod. Yeah. There might be a PC mod with, like forks and knives, and that's the only way you can play it. I don't know. Hey, listeners, um, leave us a comment down below. Um, what's what's your favorite game that where you can use a fork? In, in unconventional ways. Fork Knights is a game on Steam, apparently. <laughs> I just did a quick Google. <laughs> well, there you go. I wonder if that's trying to play on Fortnite, Fork Knights. Maybe. But it doesn't look anything like Fortnite gameplay, so I don't know. Fork Knight at Freddy's? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on a little bit. Uh, so since it's a slow news week and it's probably going to be slow for a little bit, uh, I had an idea. We're going to do this uh, little tournament, and every week we will be putting Nintendo's biggest mistakes into a 1v1 tournament bracket and discussing each tier until we have determined Nintendo's biggest mistake. So the nominees are, in no particular order... We've got Nintendo Labo, which is those cardboard accessories, I guess you could call them, for Nintendo Switch. The cardboard things you build for the games. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I Nintendo, it was a thing. <laughs> Nintendo Labo. Uh, you've got the 3DS launch. You've got uh, Nintendo 64 staying with cartridges. The Super Mario Brothers movie from 1993. How dare you? Uh, Mortal Kombat having no blood. Uh, Nintendo not buying Rare. Uh, the This is almost one mistake, but I split it up into two. There's Nintendo working on the Philips CDI and lending Mario and Zelda characters to them. And then there's also Nintendo ruining its relationship with Sony. Uh, which were basically the same decision rolled uh, into one, but kind of two mistakes. Yeah, I, I, I'll give you two for that. Uh, the 64 disk drive, motion controls, Virtual Boy, and of course, the Wii U. So those are our nominees, and Harrison was kind enough to make us a bracket to uh, to face everything off, and each week we're going to discuss one one match. And this week... The match that we'll be discussing is lending Nintendo's license to CDI versus Mortal Kombat deciding to have no blood. So that's that's a interesting mix up as far as like <laughs> the two things. It was like so. I did a little research on the Mortal. I, I did research on both, but okay. So the, the Mortal Kombat one, uh, the stuff that I wrote down that I found interesting. So they opted to replace the blood with sweat to maintain Nintendo's family-friendly reputation. Sega obviously went with the blood, and Sega ended up outselling the Super Nintendo version 4 to 1. So here's a list of the differences from the Super Nintendo version uh, compared to Arcade and Sega. The computer opponent will not perform a fatality in the Super Nintendo version if you lose. So you don't oh. even get to like see them that way. That's, uh, oh, that's off. That is, no wonder I was a Street Fighter kid. Like, <laughs> God. Nintendo. Uh, oh, so it no longer says fatality on the score screen. You know how like in between when you finish the match and it gives you like the score. It says yeah. it says finishing instead of fatality if you performed one. So that you, you get score. You get points for finishing. Um. Sub Zero's end screen, where it gives you a little bit of story, it replaces the word assassination with destruction, the destruction of Shao Kahn. Um, okay. <laughs> in the pit stage, there are no bodies impaled on the spikes. And the fatalities, I didn't know every one of these individually, but pretty much all of the fatalities were censored in one way or another. They, they were changed up. Um, one of them just like kicks you in the chest. Like, um, there's, they're like censored versions of the, the full fatality. And of course the blood was changed to sweat. So Nintendo but gave up on it green. It's not green. It's brown. 
It's brown. <laughs> It, it might be green because of the green screen effect or something that they that used, but it's okay. I always thought it was sand like growing up. I didn't think it was sweat. <laughs> it's like you, sand you, colored. You thought they were just full of sand. I don't know. They could be <laughs> sandy. I don't know. Um, but anyway, Nintendo gave up on all of this for Mortal Kombat 2. They just said, forget it. We'll do the same version as Sega. We'll get it out of the way. And then as far as the CDI thing, after Nintendo, after deciding things weren't working out with Sony on the CDI, more on that a different day, I mean the, the PlayStation that they were making together, Nintendo entered talks with Philips about a CD add-on for the Super Nintendo. And even though the system was never made, Philips still contractually was allowed to use Nintendo properties. So as a result, Philips produced the three Zelda games that everyone likes to clown on, and one Hotel Mario on the Philips CDI. There was also a Donkey Kong game in the pipeline that never went anywhere. So, yeah, this could be brand damage. Just didn't look good for Nintendo. Uh, these were not good games. People still to this day try to pretend these games didn't exist. I honestly think Hotel Mario is only bad in how it performs. Like, on paper, it's a pretty decent arcade-style game. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, people like to be like, oh, it's just a game where you're closing doors. And it's like, well, is that really <laughs> any different than like Donkey Kong's just a game where you climb ladders? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not you can talk about any game like that. It's it's about the uh, the puzzle aspect of it. So CDI like stuck around longer than I thought it did because they discontinued it in 98. <laughs> Well, yeah, because I think it was mostly operating at that point as like a CD player. <laughs> I don't think it was like putting out much media, you know? Because I'm looking through the list of games just to see if there's anything else that's of note that wasn't Nintendo. Doesn't seem to be anything really. I mean, there's Myth. cult classic plumbers don't wear ties. Which is available on consoles now. <laughs> it is? Oh, yeah. Yes. That's funny. I didn't know that. Yeah. There was a Monty Python game, apparently. Um, there should have been the Donkey Kong game, like that. Like that might be the the sneaky mistake uh, of of this week. Because well, I, I would have loved they that. They would have tried to make it like Donkey Kong Country, and it would have ended up controlling like the Zelda games, where you can't tell what's the background and what you're actually allowed to jump on. Like what's a platform, what's a background element. Like that's the, the biggest the problem game, with how these games didn't really work well. I'm not being serious. The game would have been horrible. I just <laughs> want to see, I just want to see the cutscenes. Oh with, yeah. With, 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 with Donkey Kong. And, and oh like, my God. Like, are, are, are they going to give Donkey Kong a voice or something? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Is he going to be voice animated? Because this, that might be the biggest. If like you, Harrison, if you want to see that, there was a Donkey Kong animated series that looks ridiculous. Oh, uh, I remember that. that. You should look. I think most people have forgotten about it, but it was like a CGI Donkey Kong animated series. It probably only lasted like one season. And um, it's just like ridiculously it's it's you know it's late 90s cgi tv show so it's probably yeah. what the cd the the cdi games would have looked like can can we stay with this idea for for a moment because actually and and this is for future um forgotten Ninten nintendo media would be a great segment for the future um, that's true uh now like like you just said like you know most people don't know about it or most people had forgotten it or whatever these both of these picks for this week are somewhere in the middle of this list of mistakes and i'm i've been having debates with myself about how how much of an impact or how much of a brand damage this is i'll stick with cdi for a moment like it's brand damage and you said kevin that most people try to forget about it which i'm sure is true for people that are like our age but even for someone like me i i barely knew about these games 
until I educated myself on them more. Oh, I so had you, no idea this was a thing at the time. So, so do you? So do no, you I, I got to say, if you were reading video game magazines at the time, they were legendary because two things I remember marketed like crazy in the ads and stuff were the 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 CDI was marketed in a lot of ads, and the the Atari Jaguar like two failed the systems. That, yeah, Better. that I remember. I remember wanting these things so bad, but they were both examples of systems that cost something like five hundred dollars at the time, and my mom was never going to spend the equivalent of like a twelve hundred dollar system today. <laughs> like my mom was never going to buy that for me, uh, but I I knew of these games from video game magazines, and I remember when you're a kid, you're like, oh, if it's on a if it's on a five hundred dollar system, it must be amazing, and like you you see the screenshots in the magazines and if you look at these games they don't look bad in a screenshot it's how they play that's the problem so and you're not seeing the cgi cutscenes in a screenshot either so uh, it, yeah i i think it, it it played well to magazines do, do, do you do you think do you think it, do you think that that goes more towards the overall brand damage because part, part of what also confuses me a bit is that like is that gaming journalism and the way that we consume gaming news was just way different back then like there just there just oh, wasn't yeah. that there just wasn't that much if we had the equivalent of whatever mario zelda cdi is today or if we had social media back then yes like this might be way way more up on our list but I guess I just I'm I don't know like where I would put this because I just don't know how damaging this was actually to Nintendo because like I think a lot of casual people don't even know about these games. I agree and uh, honestly I'd lean more towards my pick being the Mortal Kombat censorship thing because i mean the the proof there is in the numbers they they both yeah. released on each console and you know they were outsold four to one it's got to be because there's no way the sega genesis version controlled better it only had the three buttons which is not good for a fighting game but i mean four if you include the start button which i don't know if they used but yeah they I'll bet it looked better on Super Nintendo too, because Super Nintendo games, at least to me, they they look a little better than the Sega Genesis. So, I, I I just don't know. Like I I don't know about this because you brought up you brought up a lot of great points, and I think all of them, at, at least to a point, contribute to the fact that it didn't do well on this system, but. Given all of that, and given like the success of the Sega Genesis at the time, what do you think is the biggest reason? I think the fatalities honestly might be bigger than the blood because that was the the thing for Mortal Kombat yeah, was Mortal learning Kombat all the fatalities and and the fact that the computer opponent won't even do them means you probably you're almost guaranteed not to even see them on the nintendo version yeah because i mean i'm sure looking back it's like oh well that's not a complicated like combination of buttons but at the time it, mm -hmm. it was really hard to get any of that stuff to happen so well if you look back at the original fatalities they're actually kind they're, they're so much simpler than like what they became like the, on the original mortal Kombat, uh, a fatality is literally like down down punch like it 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 was more about knowing how to do it than it was about being able to execute it. But the, the, the thing is like when you add all this together, all of these things as a whole definitely makes the super Nintendo version feel like a, you know, a more sanitized. It makes it feel like a lesser version of the game. It feels like you're not getting your full money's worth. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It does. It, it feels like, and and I don't know if this is the first game in Nintendo where it happens, but I mean, this is an example of how Nintendo, I think, overall kind of feels about fighting in combat games, and and the fact that like 
the biggest combat game on Nintendo or maybe any home console is a silly, you know, it, it's Smash Brothers. Uh, yeah. But but I'm just, I don't, like, like, I feel, between these two picks, I feel very confused because I think I want, I, I, four to one's a lot. I, and I want to look at the overall success of the Sega Genesis and the overall success of the Genesis also in Japan. And the fact that, like, during this time, I'm pretty sure fighting games, especially in arcades, were doing better in Japan as well. So I'm just confused. Like, like I really, I, I think I don't have an opinion. I think I'm just bringing up questions that I don't have an answer to. Well, it's also clear that Nintendo knew this was a mistake, too, in that, like, they immediately... 180 on it and mortal Kombat 2 is identical to the suit to the sega genesis version so they they were like well that didn't work and they were like you know what slap an m rating on there which they had for the original one so i don't know what what the problem was but yeah they originally uh, immediately backpedaled and as far as the cdi games go I don't know how much, like Harrison said, that damaged Nintendo's reputation as much as it damaged the Philips CDI's reputation. It almost seemed Mm. like, hey, we gave you every opportunity here, guys. You had Mario and Zelda, and you still couldn't do anything to move your system. So, uh, yeah, that that it it only makes them look bad. I don't think, if anything, it makes the Nintendo games shine brighter because look what an incapable developer will do with these franchises. No, I agree. Right. And, and and also and also Zelda didn't we view Zelda at this point a little bit differently? Like Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I, I I think the latest game at that point would have been Link's Awakening maybe. It's either that or a Link to the Past. We definitely weren't to the Nintendo 64 era yet. Yeah, Link's Awakening, I guess. Yeah. So, at, 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 at this point, I mean, it's a huge franchise, but there's there's a pretty big gap between between Mario and Zelda at this point. So, also looking at it from a legacy standpoint, like, I don't think it matters too much. And like um, I said, Hotel Mario is not that bad a game. I don't know if you guys know what the game is, but it's like you're... It, it almost plays like a Mario Party mini game. So you, there's multiple. I'm surprised they haven't done this in Mario Party as like a little reference. But um, there's multiple picture like a side scrolling view with like multiple levels. Um, and that you have the doors, you go in one door and you come out on another level. Uh, and you each eat. Your goal is to close all the doors, basically, and you've got enemies to dodge and you just have to basically figure out which door leads to which connecting door so you can close them all. Um, It's not that it's not that bad a game. It's that the CDI runs like mud. It's it's so slow and chuggy that it's like unplayable. But from a design point of view, it's not that bad a game. So like I, I feel like that one even didn't even do bad. So, so was Hotel Mario a, a, a small inspiration for Luigi's Mansion when it, when it, when it came out? <laughs> it could have been. Maybe. Have been. I've seen people take issue with the fact that Luigi's Mansion 3 is in a hotel, and I'm like, okay, guys, well, do we really want the exact same game every time? We need to give them some leeway. <laughs> that is true. I actually didn't think about that. Um, no, it, it doesn't matter because it's an awesome game. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, the the hotel gimmick. I mean, the hotel. The well, yeah, the hotel gimmick. Having the yeah. elevator have different floors be different things. Amazing. We're off topic, so I think uh, we're all in agreement. This is not a week where we have anyone, uh, anyone putting up a fight for another side. I think we all agree <laughs> that Mortal Kombat, no blood, moves on to the next round as one of Nintendo's biggest mistakes ever, and it will go on to face uh, something in the future. Next week's match. I guess we could preview those here. This is a new segment, so we're learning as we go. (laughs) Next week's match will be the Nintendo 3DS launch. I don't know. A little preview. The Nintendo 3DS was way too expensive and had almost no games when it launched. No, No name games, anyway. And then that versus the Nintendo 64 deciding to stay with cartridges instead of going to the CD format. 
cost them some publishers, cost them a, a couple of things we'll discuss next week. So that's the next match of mistakes. I feel like the, I feel like I wish I knew how the, the weakest link um, <laughs> host set things up. Cause like this is Nintendo's biggest mistake. <laughs> And that's I think that was pretty good. I think that was pretty good, actually. I think that was. I think that was nice. Just, yeah, it took me just, back. Just, 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 just cut a little bit of silence at the end, and I think we're. I think we got it. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. So it's Excite Bike Mania for the spotlight. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Last week we decided to do all three games: Excite Bike, which came out on the NES in 1984, versus Excite Bike, which I don't think we got over here. That's one no. I didn't look up re- release date for. And Excite Bite 64, which came out in 2000, May here, June in Japan. So, how did everybody like their Excite Bite week? Um, you know, I, I've found that with all the N64 games we've been playing, I appreciate that system a lot more now. So, I, I that just kind of Excite Bite 64 added to that. And then, as far as the original and verses, which I kind of just considered verses like an add on. All my memories of that are from being a kid because everyone I knew who had an NES had Excite Bike. So I don't know if that was ever a pack in game or. No, but that was one of the notes I had. I said, this is one of those games that I feel like was omnipresent in the years before the Super Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, before the dark times, before the console wars. Um, <laughs> but yeah, every stack of NES games had this. Super Mar- the, the, the stack was always like Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 3. Metroid, Contra, one of the Ninja Gaiden games, one of the Mega Man games, and this was always like the stack. I was uh, never I'm, that good at the NES version. I no, I, I I've find always been terrible. <laughs> I find the mode with like I did find on the one where you're by yourself, but as soon as you put other racers in there, I find it very stressful, and I can't tell if I'm just really bad or if it's just. The difficulty is NES level difficulty. You know what I mean? No, it's it's just it's just muscle memory. It's just yeah. it's, just, it's, just, it's just it's just muscle memory, and 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 the brutality of of Excite Bite never really never really changes. Like that's my that's my biggest criticism of of Excite Bike sixty four is that like it, it's 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 super fun, but like when you're up next to someone, it's pretty much 50 50 uh, if of like who's gonna fall off their bike and then yeah take way, and, 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 and then it takes and then it takes way too long to like it just takes way too long so it, when that the, started it's happening bike. in it i kept thinking like is there a button and it's just like nope it's just proximity and pretty much a coin toss as to who's going over if if we're gonna right. jump over to 64 the thing that i thought was its biggest failing is or one of its biggest obstacles anyway, is the fact that it's a late release for the Nintendo 64. And with being a late release, it's competing with a library of a lot of established racing games. So you've got Mario Kart 64, of course, Diddy Kong Racing, Wave Race, F-Zero, um, F-Zero X rather, Star Wars Episode One Racer, Lego Racers, Beetle Adventure Racing, Cruising USA, and San Francisco Rush were all that I thought of when I was taking my notes yeah, yeah, just yeah. off the top of my head. So there's a lot of racing games on the Nintendo 64. I do think that Excite Byte 64 does a really good job of translating the NES game to 3D because it took me a bit to realize that it controlled very similar. So it's not like the other games, like a wave race where you can kind of just hit the accelerator and as long as you can get the steering mechanic down because you still have to worry about the overheating. So I thought that was kind of cool that they were able to move that over. Yeah, and I feel like they should they should give this another try. I feel like on a yeah. modern console, I think the overheating gimmick is a, a an interesting idea to add to a racing game is to have to basically you know choose between i think f f099 does something similar doesn't it where like you have a boost that drains your your health bar or something but yeah just having a sacrifice for speed is something that works really well in a racing game something like that i, I mean nintendo is super innovative so i mean they would be capable of this as you're overheating in the 
in the Switch version of this game that's going to come out, your your console could also be heating up at the same time. <laughs> so 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 if you're playing like if you're playing handheld, you know, like it starts, it starts, to, get really, it starts to get really hot. And it's like, oh, if you, if you don't like it's you're going to break your game. You know, if, yeah. if you don't if, 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 you, if you don't if you don't start playing better. I like that they went uh, for some charm on this one, though. Like, I like when you go to quit, the options are really quit or just kidding. And like, the, <laughs> yeah, it's got it's got that that menu music that sounds exactly like the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater when you're in the skate shop, like the random DJ scratches, you know, like um, that type of music. So, yeah, they, yeah. it's definitely of the time. Yeah, it's 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 of the time. Um, I have to shout out Left Field Studios, which did Excite by Sixty Four, and also did like the like the Dave Mira games. Also did uh, the Kobe Bryant NBA courtside games. They just they just made some like really f- fun games at this time. Um, and I thought the the variety of indoor outdoor. There's just there's just a lot of content in the Excite by 64. Um, I, I mentioned that like a, a lot of a lot of reviews, including Nintendo Power, pointed out the the desert mode or desert track, where you have to, where it's like a it's a randomly generated desert, and you have to follow the arrow to put out the the fires. Yeah, I which also reminded me of Wave Race, uh, just like, you know, going on the correct side of the buoy. Yeah, which I wish I had, I had memories of playing this, like, when it came out, because it feels it feels massive. And the fact that you can backtrack, the fact that you can, like, backtrack in these randomly generated you can save worlds them, as well which is really cool like if you hit a randomly generated world that you were like oh i liked that one you can save it no oh, that's cool yeah, yeah. So, so um like nintendo power and a number of reviews at the time pointed out that this was um just a super innovative feature that came out that came out of this game uh, Speaking of very- saving, though, one thing I thought was really weird when you booted up on the Nintendo Switch Online service is it's it, you have a message that says no suitable controller pack was found. And I thought that was weird because I tested and all the other games that require a controller pack do not have that message. When So I don't know if it's just something about the programming or what, but I, I thought they, that was funny. They, they just forgot. They forgot. Yeah. <laughs> eh. I don't remember uh, what, what I needed that for. It's yeah. to save to save things. Just to save. Yeah, the controller yeah. pack was it was a memory card. Basically. Well, if we're going to talk about hardware, I'm I'm backtracking to the NES version then. So, Excite by NES is the third game that we've reviewed so far that has been featured in, that was featured in Animal Crossing. So, <laughs> um, so far so far we've done um, baseball, Donkey Kong Jr. and now uh, Excite Bike, which are all playable within the Animal Crossing GameCube game. Um, also, in the Animal Crossing version, it could be transferred to a Game Boy Advance by using a link cable. And also, you could play um, Excite Bike NES through Excite Bike 64 as well. Yeah. Um, Excite which- Bike. I wasn't able to unlock, and all you have to do is get through the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, um, Excite by NES was also released around, like right after, as an e-reader card, um, which, and then later as a game pack for the classic NES. I mean, it, hard, hardware was just a mess back then. Like how, like how did we know back then? Like how. Like okay, now I gotta hook my Game Boy Advance to my GameCube to get to the Animal Crossing Island, and then I can I can use Excite Byte from uh, GameCube to transfer it to the Game Boy Advance. Like how like how did we how did we know about this stuff back then? We just magazines. 
yeah, I, yeah, I, I guess so. Scribbling notes everywhere. So, do you guys have any thoughts on versus? Because I kind of lumped it with the original game, and it's just hey, if you yeah, want to play it really is great. like an update. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very happy that we decided to pair them together because I wouldn't have that much to say. Um, I I searched and searched to try to find to try to find why they changed the music of the second one. Oh yeah, the music Unless of the original just, is iconic. That yeah, and and I was trying to figure out if there was some sort of legality. But it, it um, there, there's maybe. there's no information online of why they would just change like pretty much the entire soundtrack of this game. So it's a mystery. Um, I couldn't really find a lot on sales numbers or reviews. There's just not a lot out there. So were you guys able to progress very far in either one of them? Uh, I didn't really have the time to play long enough to progress i mean i played like full circuits in the original excite bike and then um the nintendo 64 one i was just kind of plugging around at the random modes and really reading online about what the game could do i did end up reading that this came this i think part of why it sold very poorly is it released a, a full year later in europe because of some kind of i don't know some kind of mm-hmm. cartridge shortage or something. I didn't really find a good reason, but it was a full year late in Europe at that point. Like the GameCube was either out or about to come out and didn't sell in Europe at all. So I read that right. while doing my research. Right. Yeah, it's strange. I mean, it came out yeah, North America first and then a year later. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. North America. 2001. A year later in Europe. Weird. But I tried it, with three different characters and the, the other negative I have for this type of game is you don't have to get first in every race, but you have to get first in points overall. And I just couldn't do it to unlock any other of the circuits. So I just, if did I those. remember correctly, wave race was very similar. I think it if you, was, I, you can rank like out was, really easily. I feel like wave race was a little easier, but I think you do more races also. Yeah. And you, you could turn on the the uh, announcer that heckles you, which is fun. I don't think this has that. Yeah, These I mean, announcers seem to repeat heckle, the yeah. same things over and over again. I, I, this announcer makes sure you know if you're in last. You know, he, he points yeah. it out. But <laughs> no, I don't know. I, Excite Bike, it's, they're both like, I, I feel like the NES game is actually better and more iconic. But 64 yeah. is good. It's not bad. I just think it had a it came out at the wrong time. But if I had to really pick, my favorite thing about Excite Bike is the Mario Kart 8 track. So mm-hmm. I'm just I'm just glad they didn't try to like update it and make it go crazy with it, like, you know, when they sometimes bring an NES game to a more modern console, they'll be like, Okay, now the bikes all have rockets and it's like in the future and and you can shoot each other and you know like sometimes they they go a little overboard with the changes i I do like that they kept it basically in the spirit of the nes one they didn't suddenly make it road rash like they let it still be what it was so yeah i agree with that actually pilot wings i feel like went the opposite direction where it was more realistic and more like like an actual flight simulator and then when it went to the nintendo 64 it was like here's all these cartoon characters and mount yeah, rushmore with this... nintendo characters and so i mean um, ranking wise they're in the middle yeah i i do want to bring up the the miyamoto factor to this as well um i, I mean this, this game uh, the nes version released november 28th 1984 and just for reference, it's a little more than one. It's a little more than one month after Devil World. Miyamoto was the head of both of those projects. To which I, I, I knew, I know, I know, like game development was a lot different back then. Games were smaller back then, mm. but like, how? How? Like, it just like if you look at like this like 10, 12 year span between like 83, 84 to like 1996, 
and you look at like what Miyamoto was able to do during right. that time, I mean, games are completely different without him. So I'm just like, I'm just blown away by the fact that like Excite Bike comes out one month after Devil World, which is like the least popular Miyamoto game, but it's also like is around all these other huge, huge, the biggest titles ever. So I think, I think that's pretty amazing. Um, also, this game featured an, an, an edit mode, which is also extremely innovative at the time. And I think Fire and Ice is the only other game that we've reviewed that has anything like that, unless I'm wrong. I might be wrong. You could be wrong. I give you permission. See, this is another series I'm hoping the Switch like successor brings back. Like, it's just another, there's like four or five of them that they could bring back next console. And I think it's time for Excite Bike to come back. Combine it with uh, the other ones that you, you want to come back. There you go. Excite Bike, F Zero, Ice Climbers. Ice Climbers. Kid, Excite Bike Kid 99. Icarus. That could work. That could work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I agree. I think. I, they should just I call. Think, they should call the next system the Nintendo sixty five, <laughs> all, the, all the sequels to the to the sixty four titles. No one's biting that. All right. I, 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 April April first is already is, is already is is already over. You, you know what? I, I I saw there was a game that released yesterday, and it was announced on April first. So I just thought it was a fake game. And it really like, I, I, better I, release. I, I saw I, like, I saw the announcement and I was like, "Good job, guys! I, yeah, 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 funny one, you know? Like that's great, but no, it's it's a real game." Anyways, yeah, um, what are you ranking? I, you know, I, 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 I'm gonna go first. I always go last. Um, okay. Uh, where where am I? Please please pause what I find. Okay, so Excite Bike NES, I put at forty. And I'm not gonna waste time. I'm just gonna put versus Excite Bike at 41, um, just because. I'm, I'm just gonna put those two together okay. for now. I can't really differentiate. Um, I like the sound of the first one more. I like the graphic style of versus, but the first one's way more important. And then Excite Bike 64, I put at. 27 so for reference that's right below dynamite heady right above demon's crest so i you you like it i it's the middle i don't i don't know like i think i think nintendo did a pretty good job with this port of the n64 game um would i go back to it no, because there's too many other games like it. It should be on the system. Um, I would recommend it to anyone interested. Um, I would honestly recommend either NES or N64, depending on if you want to learn the history or yeah. whatever style that you like. So I don't. That, I that's it, it for me, guys. Full... It's in the middle. It's in the middle. I put it a full 10 points below yours. I have Excite Bike 64 at number 37, which is right below F Zero X. I was like, well, I'm going to play a racing game. Which one? And I thought F Zero X I liked more. And then the NES games went lower. So I put Versus Excite Bike first at number 47, and then Excite Bike at 48. Um, even though I do like the music in Excite Bike more, I feel like the overall game is better in Versus. And those, it puts those in between the Sega Genesis Street Fighter 2 Tournament Edition and uh, puts them above Dig Dug 2, which I don't know why I had Tournament Edition this low. I think I just like the, oh yeah, because the controls on Sega are not as good. Okay, those are my rankings. So I just combined Excite Bike and Versus because Versus just felt like an add-on. So 
put those at 43, so under Dreamland 3 above Pro Wrestling. And then 64, I put it 46. So under Kung Fu Heroes, but above Nightshade. Because like I said, it's a really good game, and it's fun, but we've definitely played better stuff than it. Breaking the rules, Sean. <laughs> Always. All right, so let's find out what we're going to be reviewing next week, right after we talk about some more Nintendo fails. <laughs> Oh boy. Okay, I hope it's a slow news week next week because we pulled The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, which is a game ooh, I have a lot ooh. to say about. I don't so even know if I need to take notes on this one. I could I'm going to try and actually play through it then. Nice. I could talk for an hour off the top of my head about this game. I've This is a game I have 100%ed probably, I'm not going to over-exaggerate, but probably five or six times, which is a lot for a game. Um. Yeah, love it. See again, oh. you're you're continuing making my appreciation oh. of the system. So. I'll definitely be bringing up the 3DS version and why I think the Nintendo 64 one is better. So, so we'll talk about that. And, and and Kevin, I'm looking through. So so far, Zelda games for you are number one, three, five, six. Yeah. Yeah, this list is going to get a, my list is going to look get a little Zelda top heavy uh before before it spreads out. Yeah. I mean, depending on what we pick, but I feel like the stuff that I would have above Zelda is few and far between, so who knows when it's going to get picked. We we actually I was going to say we're kind of close, but Sean, you you only have one Zelda game in your top 7. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see, because yeah. Majora is a blind spot that I've wanted to get out of the way and experience. So maybe that'll get in the top ten. I'm kind of nervous for how it's aged for a new player. I feel like it's one of the ones that, like, I don't know. The 3DS version did do some improvements as far as quality of life goes. So I don't know. We'll see what you say. And if you want to hear what Sean has to say about that, tune in next week. We will be here just like we always are, plugging away at Nintendo, talking about the latest news and rumors and whatever else we can think of. If you'd like to tell us something to talk about, you can email us, nintendotherapypod at gmail.com. You can uh, find us on Reddit, which I've been using a lot more lately. We've got Nintendo Therapy subreddit. Just search that. And we're also on X and Threads, Nintendo Therapy, if you want to get us there. So just keep in mind, we're Nintendo fans, not Nintendo experts. So we probably got stuff wrong. Let us know in the comments now that we're on YouTube. You can do that. What did we get wrong? What do you think is the biggest Nintendo fail? What do you think is uh, the better Excitebike game? And leave a password. Uh, Sean, what's the password this week? What's the password? Vroom. Yeah, vroom vroom. Down below. Comment. I just want to see 50 comments that say vroom vroom. And uh, yeah, anyone got anything before we sign off? Uh, I'm putting a post up on our Reddit right now to see if our listeners want to settle the debate on the N64 Zeldas. What do you mean? So you can go vote on our subreddit. What do you prefer, Ocarina or Majora? That's a yin and yang, man. All right, go do that. See what uh, happens. <laughs> go do that, and we will be back next week to talk about all these things and more. <laughs>